So NAD, and this is the proper spelling of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. NAD is a, as it says, a, a dinucleotide. This is one nucleotide. This is a second nucleotide. So you can see the ribose here. And there's a, a nitrogenous base. This first base here in the bottom is adenine. And the first base up top is not one of the four traditional bases, but this is nicotinamide. What's happening, and I've drawn in the hydrogens here, is that the oxidized form, so this is oxidized, has a positive charge here in this nitrogen in uh, aqueous solution at pH 7. And it, this carbon skeleton diagram doesn't show you where the hydrogens are, but you can see that this carbon here has only three bonds, and that means that the fourth bond is to a hydrogen that's not shown. So I've drawn in the hydrogen here. Because what happens is that all of the action is happening here uh, around this part of the molecule. So electrons come from food or other electron uh, uh, sources. And these electrons reduce NAD plus to become NADH. In the process, a hydrogen gets attached here. So now this carbon atom has two hydrogens. And some of these uh, bonds in this ring uh, rearrange so that this nitrogen becomes neutral. And this is what we call NADH, which is the reduced form. And I've written another uh, proton here to, to actually balance the equation. So NAD can exist in both the oxidized and the reduced forms and actually goes back and forth. It, when it accepts electrons from food, NAD plus turns into NADH. And then NADH will then carry these electrons to something called the electron transport chain. And it will give up the electrons to the electron transport chain and in the process become oxidized back to NAD plus just want to again point out or point out to you that there is a large change in free energy in this uh, oxidation reduction of NAD plus and NADH. When NADH gives up its electrons um, eventually to oxygen, the total potential energy or the total uh, free energy that's released is a very large negative 52.4 kcal per mole, so it's a highly exergonic reaction. Essentially what we're saying is that cells are powered by hydrogen because the oxidation and reduction of NADH is essentially the transfer of hydrogen. So the explosion of the Hindenburg gave a really graphic demonstration of how much power there is in hydrogen when it reacts with oxygen. Well, we don't have explosions in cells. What we have instead is that this tremendous amount of potential energy is captured incrementally in cells to power synthesis of ATP from ADP.